By the way, hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan. We welcome to the studio, Bretman Rock. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Sit down, y'all. Sit down. <laughs> I didn't know we were starting already. I just like I I'm, I just like kind of flow. I love you know? that though. Yeah. I have no start. I have no end. Fuck slating, right? Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Action. Yeah. You 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 act when I act. Period. <laughs> you go when I go. And honestly, you got to be ahead of me, right, Carlos? Yes. That's how it works. Carlos is on it. Oh, yes. We love a Carlos. That's right. That's right. We do. Uh, by the way, today's interview <laughs> being delivered to you by GoPuff. Try them out. Uh, best convenience are out there. Thousands of items available in the palm of your hand. Get the app. Use my code Zach10 when checking out. Uh, you'll save $10 off your first two orders. You'll get whatever you want delivered to you pretty much instantly. So go, go, go. Uh, you have a code. Yeah. You, you, Very beauty guru of you. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm in that era of my life because, you know, for 16 years, nobody, uh, n n you know, we didn't do codes or brands. Didn't want to be a part of anything that we had to do. Um, and now, you know, we give out codes and now I, you're powered by something. I love sister, it. Sister, <laughs> I will drink any fucking tea you throw my way. I'm at, I'm in my sellout era. Just being fucking honest. I love it. I can't wait for my sellout era. I feel like I'm not there yet. Or maybe I passed it already and I wasn't <laughs> sure. Well, do you think it's, a, do you ever wonder or, or, or think about how long you've actually been doing this? Because you are an OG. Thank but, you. But you feel like you are viral for the first time every time you go viral. They, it's because I'm always doing something new. You know what I mean? But also I feel like that. Good point because bitch, I was around before the word influencer was even around. Bitch, I was filing taxes and the occupation. I was like, online <laughs> sensation. Like, what do I fucking put? Like, you know. And I, I think I actually remember putting like online entertainer, and I remember my tax lady being like, "Oh, you do porn." I was like, "Bitch, I'm 16." Also, I was 16 doing all this, so I was like, "I don't know how the fuck I navigated my like before." Girl, I was doing this before my titties even dropped, you know? It is true. Literally. So, yeah. But, yeah, it does feel like I'm viral. It's something I feel like I'm going... Every time I do something viral, it's always something different. It's, it's either like I'm going viral for a beauty tutorial. And now, the other day, I was I went viral because I was deadlifting 400 pounds. <laughs> so, I was like... it's I'm That's why I'm always doing something new. So. But have you realized that you just go viral for being you? That, yeah. Oh, I don't... I guess I never really think about it like that. But I think I... I think I think of it more of like a new version of me goes viral every time. But is it a new version of you or just a different side to you? A different side to me, I guess. Yeah. And since we're talking about my book, it's like a new chapter of me but, going but, viral every time. But like you deadlifting, like you love working out. Yeah. It's a part of your daily life. It's part of my name as well. Cause yeah. girl, my dad was like, bitch, you have to work out. If you're not, if you're not, I'm not going to name you after two wrestlers and be a bum <laughs> bitch. So... <laughs> Yeah, I guess I was just really doing it because, like, my dad forced me to um, work out. Were you nervous to share at first you working out? Because, like, there is, like, a perception around it. And even, like, there is there's a visual dichotomy or something that happens in somebody's brain when you see somebody who's who in one second could wear makeup and do their yeah. hair and be so strikingly gorgeous and drop dead beautiful. Period. And then the next <laughs> second be incredibly hot and have a six-pack and be down to fuck you up. I guess I wasn't really nervous because I feel like I was always sharing the fitness sides of me. I feel like I've, I was sharing videos of me running track yeah, yeah. Um, in high school. But in that sense, I guess like when I when people first found out that I was actually like a track star, <laughs> I was fucking nervous because people would show up at like my high school track meets and like cheer me on. And I hated that shit because I did hurdles too. And like, you know, hurdles is like the number one like accident like in every fucking event like everyone's oh someone's always yeah. fucking falling and it literally just took one time of me falling and i quit my whole junior year of track because people were watching because people came and i fell and people actually fucking posted it on twitter and i got insecure from that and then i joined again my senior year and i ate that shit up i went to states um i podiumed uh, do you feel like you lost out on something that could have been great because of what came along with that online fame early on like what me being an olympian bitch well you like, could i mean what, you never know. what would have i lost out in skipping out in ju uh, um my junior year no i i think i i think i was just like so delusional at the time but also um who's gonna bet on the short filipino kid doing 800 meter hurt i mean 400 meter hurdles like no i was literally doing it for fun so yes but no but was there no part of you that wanted to be great at it i 
I mean, I'm a Leo, so I'll, yes, I guess like with everything I try, I have to be the best at it. But can we apply that to what you started doing online? I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think I had to apply that bitch because I came in like, who's gonna be me? Like, <laughs> I literally, I'm in my own lane. It's and crazy. So, like, even when I was in like the beauty industry, I feel like even though people were calling me a beauty guru, I just never really like associate myself with that word because I'm like, it's so very limiting. Like, <laughs> ugh, I'm not just beautiful. Like, it's so hard being just beautiful, really. So yeah, no. You're so much more than just looks. I am so much more, <laughs> more than what meets the eyes. No, you really are one of the funniest people I've mm -hmm. ever seen in Thank person or, or through a screen. You like deliver lines like nobody's business. You showcase your family beautifully. Like, Thank you. Everything seems strategic, but I have this weird feeling that it isn't. But you have to be driven by something. What is my drive? Um, I think I was just so broke for so long, Zach, bitch. <laughs> is it money? I don't want to go back to that shit, honestly. So what's driving me is really just knowing that as fast as all of this came and as hard as I worked, like, I could literally lose it so fast, I think. But also, that's so, like, cliche. Like, bitch, that's what everything you do. Like, you could lose everything so fast, I think. You could die any second. That is true. But it do you feel like you work and make money for more than just you? I feel like your family's right there by your side now. Yes. Oh my God, bitch. Are we really, really going to get it there right now? I feel um, like you provide for more than just you. So there's yes. responsibility that's larger than just uh, a solo Bretman. Yeah. Um. Well, my, my dad was interesting because the bitch like cheated on my mom with my maid growing up. And I was the one that kind of told my mom like, hey... Because my, my mom left me in the Philippines with my dad. He hired this maid who he told my mom was a lesbian. And then my mom called one day and was like, hey, how's the maid, by the way? And I was like, oh, I was eight at the time. And I was like, oh, they're fine. Like, dad's always kissing her. And, like, they're always massaging each other. And, like, I literally just heard my mom's heart drop, like, to... The like on the phone and I was eight years old and I could already kind of comprehend like that she was hurt. And she came home after a week after that call and while my maid was literally cooking, like cooking, like she was cooking fish and there was a lot of oil in that fucking pan, girl. <laughs> and bitch, my mom literally just stormed in. Mind you, she didn't tell anyone she was coming home so everyone was too shook to even react or stop her. And she just like, slapped her with no a, way yeah and like her hands were boiling and i know all of this because i was eating oatmeal on the table just watching all of this happen i'm like oh my god this is cute not I, that's not my train of thought at the time but i was like so shook that my mom was home that i i was like wait is that my mom like is this happening right now and she just dragged her out of the house as she was like you know and the floor was oily so it was easily like my mom was like the bitch was slipping and sliding but to answer your question that is my drive not my mom beating my maid but like just the fact that i think i blamed myself for my parents separating for a really long time because i was the the rat that told my mom about the maid oh. and so i really young i kind of like blamed myself and i kind of just gave myself the role of like the breadwinner of the family like my mom didn't sit me down and be like bitch you owe me fucking this and that but i think because I felt like I caused my family's separation at a really young age. I think I kind of gave myself the um, pressure to provide because I was the reason why they didn't have a dad. But can you see today clearly that you're not the reason why they separated? Oh, no, <laughs> I think I've forgiven myself. I think around the time where I was like 18, where I really just was like, oh, my God, like my dad would not. First of all, my dad could not have slayed makeup, first of all. like, eh. <laughs> But, like, I really, I, I think I forgave myself because, like, one, my mom found a boyfriend who's so much cuter than my dad. <laughs> and two, um, I just don't think my dad would have the work ethics that I have, honestly, because he was just not it <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, so, no, I think I forgave myself because I don't think my dad would have really even done half the things I've provided for my family, to be honest with you. Does your, do you look at your dad differently after that? Mm, I mean, do look down at him now because he's six feet under, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I've always kind of associated my dad with... He was a really great dad. I just don't think he was a great husband. Let's just say that. What do you learn about love from seeing that firsthand? What did I learn about love? Do you oh feel like gosh. you even know what love is? Bitch. 
That's heavy. Um, to be honest, no. I feel like even when I was writing about my ex on my book, like I, I still feel like I I didn't figure out love like that because I don't think I was with someone that actually like loved me. But did you love them? Yeah, I think. Do you feel like you you think? But do you I, feel like you can't really feel I think, love? I think because I don't know what love is, so I don't know how. Like you know, do you not? Do you not know what love is because it hasn't been shown to you outside of your family? Yes. Do you feel like you'd even know when somebody was showing you love if they were? I think I I know when and I think most of the time usually like I because I'm not used to it, I tend to like push people away when they do show love, I think. And that's something that I'm getting over with, I promise. It's like letting people love me and allowing people to love me because I when they do, I get kind of like, oh, why the fuck do you like me? You, do you self-sabotage? <laughs> I think a lot of my relationship, like, um, not just, like, with, like, l- my love life, but even, like, with my friendships, too. Like, sometimes, like, when my friends get a little too close, I'm like, okay, wait, wait. like, I, I tend to think, like, what do you want from me? You know what I mean? Oh. It's, I don't know. But maybe they just want you. But I just feel like everyone wants something from me sometimes. But also, I think it's because I became an influencer, like, really, really young. And that was the case for some of my friendships. And so, I kind of, like, burn bridges a lot now. Do you, but you do it purposefully? Well, you know you're doing it, right? Maybe you go silent. <laughs> maybe you... Like, ah, do it for fun. <laughs> um, no, I don't think I do it purposely. I think defense. I just do it as, like, a um, defense mechanism, yeah. I think. Do you feel like your family wants something from you outside of you just being you? Respectfully, yes. Sometimes, yeah. Because I think, especially some family members who who have said, like, the worst things, like, about me being gay. Like, I've had uncles that were like, bitch. Like, I've had uncles, like, refer to me as a demonic demon like they they call demonyong bakla which means like a demonic faggot basically and like you know and so and then like suddenly i'm famous and then like we're at family parties and now all their facebook captions like my famous my famous what what he captioned it the other day he was like my famous nephew bretman rock I'm like, okay, bitch, you just called me a demonic faggot, like, when I was eight. Like, and I was, like, a child, you know? And, like, so, um, obviously not with all my family members, um, especially the ones that, like, grew up in that. I grew up in a 20, in a five-bedroom home with 25 people. I'm never talking about that with 25 people. Those 25 people loved me. But, like, it's more like the... Outer ring. The outer ring, girls. That really weren't even there in my childhood. Like, bitch, who the fuck are you? Yeah, they were the shit talkers who were in prison. Yeah. <laughs> and now want to be around just for the fucking Facebook photo. Yes. They're like, oh, yeah, because I told you. Like, it's just so funny because they'll they, they claim things like, oh, you're funny because I'm funny. Bitch, you are not. Who the fuck said you're funny? <laughs> who the fuck said you are funny, uncle? Like, first of all. But also, who are you? <laughs> literally. So, yeah, there's just, I don't know. It's uh, that's insane to hear firsthand, but you, you, dude, you, you come from a totally different side of the planet. That is, we are fucking backwards and disgusting. And, mm-hmm. but, it, but the part of me like makes me happy that people are pieces of shit pretty much everywhere in different fonts. Uh, We're all pieces of shit in different fonts, uh, honestly. <laughs> What was it like writing this book? I feel like I'm a piece of shit to my sister sometimes. Especially my... Yes. I feel like, oh my gosh. um, I don't know why I'm going to this tangent, Uh. but something just sparks an idea. But like, when I was a kid, my sister was always like the best supporting actress. Like we... I feel like every like creative kid like performed in front of their whole family at one point. But like, I remembered being like, we would put on a play and I'd we'd do a Spice Girls thing. And I would be all of the fucking Spice Girls. <laughs> of course And my would. sister would just be the fan, like, cheering me on. And I played every fucking Spice Girl because she didn't know the... First of all, if you don't know the verse, to tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I mean, get, step out. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> like, 
I am Miss Posh, Baby, and Scary Spice. I'm all of them. Um, and my sister was a fan running up on stage. But yeah, in that way, like I was like a piece of shit. Like literally, I my so my whole entire like even like down to when I first actually started making videos to my sister, she's still my co-star. Like she's like, you know. Um, do, do you try to make it right? Do I try to make do it you right? Do you, do you I acknowledge this not with my sister. I, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Sisters are sisters. I fucking hate that bitch. But <laughs> now I feel like I project what I wish I was with my sister through my little niece. Because she has uh. like kids now. And like now she is like the star of the show. Like my little Cleo. Um, she and kills now, it by the way. Yeah. She, now I project what I wish I did with my sister. But do I regret it? Absolutely fucking not. She didn't know the fucking verse to tell you what I want. What I really, really want. That's... Not but my problem. In a way, the sacrifice that she made as being your fan while you were the Spice Girls <laughs> is worth it, right? Because your your rising tide floats all boats. Yes. And now she gets to actually like kind of like dabble in into a little bit of my world. And she's like a little bit of an influencer on her own. So Giddy up. Yeah. Giddy up. Was writing this book hard or, or hard in the right ways or hard in the wrong ways? Um it was hard in the right ways, I think. Um, for sure, because a lot of the book was inspired by my journal. Um, and so it was easy in that way because I feel like I already knew what I wanted to write about because I really just like referred back to my journal. And I was like, oh, I want to talk about this. So How long have you been keeping that journal? I keep a new journal every year ever since I was a senior in high school. So it wow. really hasn't been that long. Um, but when I was a kid, because I realized there's a difference between a diary and a journal. Oh. But when I was a kid, I always kept a di the diary or like journal of some sort. But I never really got to like finish it. Because like, I feel like at some point we all start a journal and like it lasts like three days and we forget about it. <laughs> so that's very much like moved me. But after senior year, I started kind of just like writing everything down. Like, Why? um why because i wasn't going to college and i felt like i was that <laughs> honest the honest truth is i wasn't going to college and i felt like i needed to still kind of do something ac academic or whatever <laughs> the fuck that means uh but also it's because um my cousin got me this cute little journal that was giving very much like what a harry potter's journal would have looked like it was giving very like vintage like napoleon like you know, like the brown. Yeah, yeah. Fancy. And I was like, oh my God, that's what a fucking journal looks like. And so, to be honest with you, I did it for the clout. <laughs> I did it for the aesthetics. I really feel like hot girls journal. So I was like, okay. But it worked out. It, it truly did. And I also feel like I, um, when I say journal, by the way, like I'm not like literally like typing something deep every, not typing, writing something deep every day. Sometimes I just wake up and I, and I will just write like what I wish I ate, what I'm going to eat that day. And like, you know, it's never like really me reflecting all the fucking time. Cause that's a little insane. If you're always reflecting every day, hmm. like who does that? Does it help you stay present or? Um, does it help me stay present? I think I, yes, I think it also makes me like, it forces me to reflect if anything and it forces me to just kind of like have my m mind going i don't know i don't know why i journal. You, I, I i think it just became like a habit of to write things down did you do you start your day with it or end your day with it i only journal in the morning got it yeah because i don't i don't yeah i'm high by the time <laughs> noon hits honestly like three bitch i'm not writing anything down bitch i'm high <laughs> Is it weird to think that that journal probably got you a couple million dollars in a book advance? Bitch, yes. I think about it all the time. I have I have five journals lined up and I'm, I have to thank them every day. I'm like, thank you. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, Harper Collins would not know my name without y'all. That's wild. Yeah. Was it hard to decide what stories to put in the book? Because you open up and you tell some pretty personal things. Was it hard? Um, I think it was more like actually like... I think because like writing the book, I was I was always um, I'd FaceTime my writer as well every day and would discuss like what we want to talk about. But I think because I write the I write in my journal in my voice and I tend to like not be vulnerable and I like to joke around about like dumb shit. Like I can't even talk about my dad's death without joking about it first. And so I think it was hard because my writer would always force me to be vulnerable and be like bitch you don't have to joke about this right now like you can actually like speak from the heart so i think it it's, it's hard for me to like speak from the heart whatever the fuck that means so like disneyland <laughs> yes would you consider that the most magical place on earth 
Now I oh now I do honestly. I mean that's where I lost my virginity. So that, Disneyland is very much where. Girl, now you're asking too fucking much. Read the book. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's at the Anaheim one. I think it's Disney World. Right? No, Disneyland no, land is in it. California. Okay, whatever the one is, Anaheim is, that's where I lost my virginity. But like where in Disneyland? Girl. On um, Splash Mountain. Really? No. No, bitch. <laughs> no, I read, no, I, no he, he's, listening, he's listening to the audiobook. Oh, work. Okay, let me actually tell you. So I met the guy at the churro stand, which is very <laughs> fitting. <laughs> what? Wait, bitch, we were re- literally waiting for a ride, and I'm like, girl, my cousins told me, uh, this This was also my first time at Disneyland. <coughs> and my cousins were like, bitch, you have to try this, try this, try that. And I remember my cousin being like, bitch, the churros there are insane. And so, um... Yes, they are. I didn't know that. Well... I, and yes, they were, bitch. Um, and we were waiting for a ride, and I was like, guys, I'm gonna get a churro real quick. So I was at the churro stand, and girl, this fine-ass man was like, are you Bretman Rock? And girl, I was like... Sometimes, like, you know, me me trying to be fucking flirty. I'm like, oh, yeah, most likely him sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) And so we take a picture. I didn't think much of it. And then, um, you know, went through the whole Disneyland experience. And I'm back in my hotel room now. I'm 18. So this is, I'm 18. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was on this app, you know, rhymes with mind her. (laughs) Um, And a little boop happened. And I clicked. And it was, like, 71 feet away. Bitch. What the fuck? The bitch was staying like above me or something, bitch. 71 feet away. <laughs> and then he goes, Um, we took a picture earlier at the churro stand. <laughs> Literally the it was the it was the picture we took, and then we took a picture earlier at the churro stand. And I was like, Ooh, girl, I'm getting another churro tonight. <laughs> um, so you know, I did my little, you know, flirtatiously, and um next thing you know, s- 71 feet later, it kept <laughs> it kept getting closer and closer, and then we linked up. Do you want to know the rest of that? Because, yeah. And then I lost my virginity. I lied to him, though, because I was like, oh, yeah, I've done this before. Yeah. Bitch, I have not done that shit before. And also, nobody taught me about douching. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just kind of drinking. Oh, my water. God. Oh. oh, He gets into it in the book. We know what ha- I know what happens next. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, we all have oh. to learn that lesson. Yeah, you know. I know. Oh. But yeah, I paint. That's also <laughs> what? that's a gay term for like when you um shit on a dick. <laughs> I paint. I was a painter, but you've learned. But I've learned. I am no longer a painter. Actually, later in the book, you explain how you how to actually douche. <laughs> Girl, I have my own douching. Um, rich. Do you I, use electric douche? Do you use a uh, you know just old fashioned one of. I use a good old fashioned one, mm-hmm. you know, one of the ones that look like a little turkey baster fashion. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. Cause the the new the new fashion, I guess is the word, attaches to your like um it's the ones that attach to your um shower. shower oh what? I haven't head. seen this. And it's a little too um much? Am I going there right now? You can. Okay. It's a little too fucking strong because bitch <laughs> the one time I tried it, bitch. Oh my god! Wait, I, want I this. might as well have gotten a colonic, bitch, because yeah. that shit. I felt it. Clean the tube, sister. Bitch, I felt the water like rush. Ah! Up it to, comes out shooting you out. Heart. I felt it in my heart, girl. Like I literally was like, "Is that the water?" <laughs> yeah, girl. That's literally what that was. It was too strong. Wait, what's the company that makes it? Can you send me one? Oh yeah, they sell it on every sex store. They uh, literally. I've been seen ones. I, I I've been. <laughs> Amazon probably has it, <laughs> and Posh. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh my man! God. Wait, so uh, is it hard to date as Bretman Rock? Um, Bretman Rock don't date. I mean, it, Anymore, Bretman Rock I fucks think. at Disneyland. I like that. Oh you my god! A fan Beach, at Disneyland. Now you say like that. <laughs> Isn't Bretman that Rock fucks at Disneyland, but he don't date. <laughs> Who says that? That's what happened. Why you say it like that? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> ew. Uh, <laughs> By the way, that's my nightmare. What? Fuck Meeting I somebody know. and then seeing them on a dating app like that. And then- oh, I thought you meant fucking at Disneyland. I'm like, girl, that was a dream come true. <laughs> so you have no problem dating a fan or fucking a fan? Clearly not. Oh my God, bitch. Um, <laughs> at the moment... I- I think 18-year-old me and 24-year-old me have different answers. Got it. 
I get that. Right now, you're interviewing the new me. So <laughs> I I feel like, no, not anymore because I've done been there, done that. You know, I already checked that off the list. So I don't think I have to do it again. No. <laughs> I would love to. Honestly, yeah, no, I wouldn't fuck a fan now. Hmm. Damn, you gotta, you gotta step out of the run. <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> Bitch. Yeah, truthfully, no. I don't. Th- I feel like I couldn't take it seriously. I also like what level of a fan though. Like, do mm. they like do they know mm. me or like do they know know me? Yeah, but here's like, the, like, do they know I have forty four chickens or do they <laughs> know I make videos with my chickens? <laughs> you eat those chickens or the actual pets? Bitch, I would never eat my own fucking chicken. I can't even eat their eggs. It gets really? that bad. Like, I still have to buy my own eggs. At, what? um, <laughs> What's the point of having forty four chickens? I, for the cloud, like bitch, <laughs> girl, my I, literally, bitch. Every time I post a chicken, forty million views on TikTok. I'm like, where the fuck? So, so is that- <laughs> That's the secret of TikTok. Get forty four chickens, but also no, I didn't start with forty four chickens. I got four chickens at the pet store, and then I posted one video about it, and all my neighbors was like, "Bitch, come and grab a chicken." And I live in like. If you've been to Hawaii, like there's just chickens running around everywhere on the fucking <laughs> island, bitch. Everybody has chickens. Um. And my neighbors were just like, come grab a chicken, come grab a silky chicken, come grab these miniature chickens. And bitch, I said yes to everybody. <laughs> and I was just grabbing chickens left and right. Also, I didn't know you could order eggs on eBay. Bitch, I was ordering eggs on so eBay. You're hatching incubating them, them hoes. Yes. What the fuck? And like, yeah, my first chicken was last July, and now I have 44 fucking chickens. Oh my God. It's you, crazy. When are you gonna and stop? And the HOA, if they're watching this, bitch, I only have 20. <laughs> Bitch, I didn't know that we were only allowed twenty chickens. <laughs> I mean, you can petition. Are you? You can also run for to be the president of your HOA. No, I know that. Have you thought of that? Um, no, I don't. I've never been even even in a one fucking meeting at, for HOA. Mm. They email me all the time, like, "Bitch, you have to be president." I'm like, "Girl, <laughs> don't they make Zoom for that?" <laughs> Wait, I can't. Um, so do you date? No, I'm not dating right now, but I'm doing a Jubilee video in a couple of days and I'm going to be dating people based on their outfits. Oh, okay. So, so not real. <laughs> so no, not really. So, bra- so you so do it for the clout. Deal? Yeah, the clout. The, the content. <laughs> the fuck? I'm, bitch, not, I'm in my sellout era. Like I said, bitch, I'm going to date for clout. The fuck? Wait, would you be on Raya? Would I be? I was on Raya, actually, but oh, gosh. Yeah, it's rough. I was there for like two days, I think. <laughs> Wait, who was your... Can I... Uh, well, we probably won't put this, but no, who was right. your references for R- Raya? Oh, uh, probably at the time, I think Megan Trainer. Oh, that's a good reference. But she was single at the time, no longer. Yeah. Obviously, she's married. And she's pregnant now, too. Mm-hmm. Two, Congrats, yeah, baby, Megan. Uh, wait, who's your reference? My reference, she didn't know me, bitch. I don't even know how I got approved. Oh, but I, mean, I put I for fun, for fun. I put Paris Hilton, and I got approved. <laughs> 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 what? For fun, literally. You know why I put Paris Hilton? Because I think around the time when I was like signing up for Raya, which I was like nineteen twenty, around that time. I think she had just commented on a video of mine's like you know purple her. heart. I still remember what she fucking commented. It was a purple heart. And I was like, mm, Paris Hilton, she knows me. That's, That's about me. Fucking iconic. And now she actually knows me because we filmed a Klarna commercial together. Oh my God, I'm just plugging left and right. I'm we sorry. love it. I, I love am this. so sorry, but it's coming out in a couple of days. God, what's it like to be so rich? Um, It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I'm kidding. Um, Is that a real question? Because I will answer it. Yeah. yeah. How does it feel like that I'm rich? Um, it feels. Oh my gosh! I don't even know. I feel like, bitch. Who asks is that? <laughs> How you feel like you're rich? Um, bitch. I feel successful. I don't know. No, no but like, it, when do you look at your bank account and just like feel oh, safety? Yeah. Oh, oh my god! When people ask me what are your what is your daily affirmations, I'm like, I check my bank account. <laughs> the fuck. I don't have to remind myself I'm beautiful. I don't have to remind myself I have everything I have to achieve everything I need. I just check my bank account. Sister. And I'm like, I'm that girl. That's it's a big deal. And then the validation of being able to take care of your family. Yeah. And provide I'm also for those around not you. that serious, y'all. I don't check my bank account like that, but sometimes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are obsessed with this audiobook. By the way, we're going to put a link oh in the description God, below Dan, so you can grab it on Audible. to my audiobook like that? I only have 30 minutes left. Crazy. I've sat through almost six hours. 
I say it like it was a bad thing. No, I enjoyed it. Thank Loved you. It. It was a good Thank six you. Hours. What did you learn the most? Like, I mean, how to douche. How to douche. <laughs> I also learned you got circumcised later in life. Whoa. Fifth grade. That's what? Mm -hmm. It's not a thing in... Um, bitch, first of all, that was my reaction when I found out that Americans get circumcised yeah, so the you minute get... you're born, bitch. First of all, Yeah, I bitch. get it. It's gross. But I, I love it. You got your dick open Sister. when you're like seven because minutes old. You know I the pain that was involved with getting it done when you were older? I don't want to yeah, deal with that. Yeah, but why'd you do that? Oh, I was wide awake too. And my mom was full on catching up <laughs> with her high school friends who was cutting up my dick. <laughs> wait, wait. Wait, wait, hold on. Girl, wait? it's a story. I can wait. I can take you there too. <laughs> okay, set the scene. You're getting circumcised okay. at the age of 10. Fifth grade, I came home to the Philippines. My first vacation ever from coming. This is, I just already came to Hawaii. Second grade, third, fourth, fifth grade, I went back home to the Philippines. Got it. Because my brother was getting married or whatever fuck. Um, and then, you know... When you're back home in the Philippines, they tease you about being uncircumcised, bitch. They call you support, uh. which means like the rough translation is like a plastic wrapper, basically. It's like like you're covered uh. and it's like a bad thing because then they tease you about it being stank or whatever the fuck. You know, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. curse or whatever the fuck. Um, they tease you about that. And so my mom was like, girl, we're going to have to cut your clit open now. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so... And in the Philippines, um, I think they have like this thing, like this fundraising every time where they come to different poor areas of the Philippines and they circumcise you for free. But they weren't having that around the time I needed to get circumcised. <laughs> so I had to actually go to my, um, like an actual doctor's, but you know, developing countries type of doctor. Um, and this was my mom's high school fucking friend. <laughs> <laughs> and they decided to catch up while I'm like on numb. And mind you, I'm like this, like, <laughs> like this <laughs> on a table. And like, he's just like numbing me up. And my, and my <gasps> doctor was like, so how is your marriage? And yeah. And so he's just cutting me up. I'm like washing it. Cause like by this time it's <clears throat> numb. And then in the Philippines, they're actually so considerate because I feel like they, ask you like oh what kind of circumcision do you want there's the options did they ask you about that when you were born no. exactly <laughs> no, no, no. so you can either get a v cut where they cut a line right across on top and huh. it just opens a flower cut where they cut a line on top a line on the bottom and it opens like a flower <laughs> or like a round cut where they cut like the whole fucking um skin Four off skin, like yeah. i think that's what they do in america okay mm -hmm. would you like to guess which one i got <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what? Why do you think you got the flower? I was gonna say flower too. Oh, uh, that's that would be so fitting. Now, I, uh, oh. no, I got the V cut because they said it was the least painful. Oh, that's smart, good bitch. The story don't even end there, girl. <laughs> um, so you know, in America, after like a visit, you after a cut, you know, they usually send you home with some antibiotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, drugs, some ointments, oh, and shit. No. Bitch, tell me why I had to wash my clit with, um, I'm, I keep calling it my clit, I'm sorry. Tell me why I had to wash my dick with fucking guava leaves. <laughs> what the fuck? We have, to, yes, it's a natural, like, um, disinfectant or whatever the fuck. So you boil guava leaves and you, like, pow pow yourself with it and you just wash your dick with it. And how long does that last? You do it for, I ended up having to do it for a week because, you know, she's a fast healer. <laughs> I'm a fast healer, but usually they said two weeks, but girl, I was like, I was over it by a week. Also, it helps dries out the, um, the cut. Got it. That's wild. Yeah, girl. Guava leaves? Mm -hmm. A circumcision at 10? Yeah. Were you nervous to take it out for the first time and show it later in life? I'm oh, assuming. Girl. Oh. Um, it looks like a regular bitch. I hate you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why would you ask that right now? <laughs> Um, was I scared? No, bitch. Um, there, it's, it don't look weird. That's no, probably beautiful. Yeah. If anything, I'm like, wow, they ate. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, just for to be clear, I, you know, uncircumcised penises are acceptable yeah, in society no, and beautiful. For sure. Yeah. And I love Latin, man. Keep them coming yeah, the, in me. <laughs> 
Latin men, by the way, Australian men, New Zealand men. Mm. There's a lot of people. But by the Bitch, way, New Zealand is not Latin, first of all. Yeah, but the, the, but they, no, I'm saying they're all in certain Oh, okay. I oh. was like going to say, I was like, Latin, Australian, <laughs> New Zealand. <laughs> oh, no. no just, they just, ain't Latin, girl. There's a lot of regions of the world that are uncircumcised. I feel like there's more people that are uncircumcised than, than circumcised. circumcised totally. Like Italian people, too. Like, yeah. They don't cut French the people? Yeah. Mm hmm. I love all dicks. All dicks matter. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. That is so. Yes. All dicks matter, literally. Yes. Um, not so inappropriate question. Do you think this book needs to be read in your voice for it to? It literally. That's the only way you can read it, bitch. Tell me why the fuck. I feel like every time I answer a question, tell me why the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but tell me why the fuck somebody was reviewing my um book the other day and was like, these grammatical errors. I'm like, bitch. I talk like that in. I, I talk like that. I wrote the book how I fucking talk, bitch. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's going to have grammatical errors. And if you don't read the book in my voice, truth, oh my God, ugh, truthfully, it will not fucking make sense. Because mm -hmm. even recording the book, um, my director was like very adamant about me, like trying to actually enunciate everything and shit like that. Yeah, but that's not you. Yeah, I'm like, bitch, if you don't roll out my tongue correctly, it's, they're not going to get the vibes. Because <laughs> there was like a, um, a, a, I guess like a paragraph in the book where I was quoting Hannah Montana lyrics <laughs> and she, and I was like, I think I was saying like, what is, what is the quote that I was talking about? Anyways, it was a Hannah Montana quote lyrics. I probably can't even say it in here cause I would get this, the, the MCA, but I was singing it. Oh, it was a, I get lonely. I get ignored. I feel scared. I feel ignored. I feel happy. I get silly. I choke on my own words. Yeah, Miley's not in the studio, but whatever. Sounds um, like it. I know I sounded like her. Um, But I was trying to fucking sing it. And every fucking time, the bishop would cut me off. And she's like, I need you to actually read it. You can't sing it because it will get like copyrighted and stuff Ugh. like that. But bitch, I no still fun. sang it. The one, on, the one that I actually posted, I wasn't that mad about, but... um. Yeah, I don't even know what the question was anymore. What was the hardest part, though, about writing a book? The hardest part? I think it was organizing it. Because mm -hmm. I feel like even now, I feel like I could have organized the book better. But it was really just like a bunch of essays like throughout my life that I think like there was no point of me trying to make it in chronological <laughs> Chronological order? <laughs> chronological order. Cause you know, um, but I think it was, I think it's just, that's just me being nitpicky though. Do you learn anything about yourself after writing the book? Um, did I learn about anything about myself while I was writing the book? Mm, not that I can think of right now, but I learned that I can act, I think I, the most valuable lesson I learned writing the book was the process of writing the book. Like, I didn't know that you had to, like, do a proposal and, like, um, the publishing companies, like, bid on your book and shit like that. Like, I think I love the... I love learning about the process of writing a book and, like, what it takes to publish it. And, like, even now I'm still learning about, like, what a book press tour is okay. and, like, stuff like that. So... Would you do it again? Um, not soon. Yeah. Do you feel like you have another book within you? Not soon. <laughs> Fuck. Um, but I will do a book again for sure. I will write, like, I feel like I would write a, um, like, a kid's book one day. Like, like you know, like a, like That's a, like a fun. story, like a story about, like, a non-binary kid, like, finding himself, like, you know. With his chickens? With his chickens. I don't know. Something cute like that for, like, my little niece to read. Or, like, like a book for, like, little kids to, like, actually want to read and like learn about like non-binary you people. should do that are you do you identify as non-binary i do actually i'm I really like sorry I'm always... i referred to you as he oh I'm really no sorry. i go by all the pronouns i'm okay. like i don't go by they them i mean i do go by they them but i i don't Someone... go strictly by they them i go by all of them got it because i i also am non-binary not because of like this is the only one that i'm not for clout about <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she clapped. Yeah, this is not the one. But um, in my language, like we don't really have a he or she. We have sha. When you refer to someone, you call them sha. So I feel like in a way, I've always been non-binary, and like even down to when I was a kid, like my grandma would always introduce me to all her like friends and call me like this is my handsome and beautiful grandson. So she would always like kind of associate me with both feminine and. Mm 
masculine words. And so I feel like I've always been non-binary, to be honest. Do you feel like you have a hand in educating people who live in the Philippines and all of Asia on what it means to be queer? Because you have a massive fucking following, but I'm sure a lot of that, fo- you're doing a signing in Manila. Like that's, yeah. I mean, um, I, there's no fans, like the fans in, in, in oh, the fucking it, Philippines. girl, I know. It's crazy. And they must see you as such a fucking rock star. So do you see, do you feel like you have a responsibility in terms of education? I think, if I'm being honest with you, I feel like Philippines and a lot of native um, native background people, I feel like if anything, Philippines has the upper hand to educate the world about mm-hmm. queerness because I feel like even in in Hawaii too, like they've always kind of um, looked up to gay people. They were respected in the communities and um, they were called mahus in Hawaii and in the Philippines, they were babaylans, which were like um, usually trans women. Um, and they looked up to them before like pre-colonial era. And I think in a way, I think there's something to be learned about um, how queer people were celebrated back in the day before, you know, the missionaries came and said, gays are wrong. <laughs> and so I think, I think if I were to educate the world about the world about queerness, I think it's the fact that we've always been here. We've always been around and we're not going anywhere. And if we're really talking about it. We were truly the most respected in our communities. And I don't know why that changed. You got to listen or read Bretman Rock's book. We're going to put a link to both of it in the description below. It is on Audible, right? Uh, yeah, I think read by me. Fuck yeah. yeah! How long does it take to do that? Because it is six hours if you listen to the whole Bitch. thing. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> I think it would take someone who okay, who actually likes to read like two days to do it. Bitch, my illiterate ass. Because <laughs> girl, I could not read for shit. Took four days. <laughs> Four days, um, and I start at 10 a.m. and I end at 5 p.m. every day. <laughs> That's long four days. Yeah, it was it was low key really fun though, because um, I was in a studio booth like not similar to this, of course, because you guys got the budget. But <laughs> I felt like I was living my pop star era in there, girl. I I was like, bitch. Yeah, I didn't I didn't mind. And time goes by when you're like honed in, like reading words. Mm-hmm. I think, but I think. What was hard about it is, like, I feel like at a certain point, like, your brain starts, like, I think you start giving yourself dyslexia. No offense mm. to people who actually have dyslexia. But, like, after staring at, like, a book for so long, oh, yeah. like, I, I truthfully can't read. Were, were you reading it from the book or did they have it printed out? I was reading it on a Kindle oh, moment. Got it. Yeah. You know, the book does go in chronological order. I know you said it's kind of, it really does. It starts when you were young and it kind of yeah. ends as an adult. So it does take you through the timeline of your entire life. Which is very fascinating. Thank you. I think it was just because I kept, like, referring back to the Philippines when I'm already, like, home. So I think, in a way, like, I wish I organized that more. But thank you. Mm -hmm. That made me feel better, actually. But, yeah. (laughs) You're welcome. I saw one of the reviews refer to you as a twonk. Is that an insult or? I honestly don't think it's an insult. But I don't also. Compliment? Is that a twink and a skunk? (laughs) <laughs> bitch it's like a <laughs> hunk it's like a hunky twink i guess i'm just kidding like a you, twink and a skunk bitch <laughs> you do not resemble a skunk whatsoever girl please <laughs> um <laughs> um what was the question Sorry. twonk compliment or insult but it, it i think it's a co- i think that I think the internet sees it as a compliment. I don't care, honestly. I still think I still see myself as a twink, to be honest with you. Um, but I don't know. I, yeah, I don't think it's a comp. I, I don't think it's a insult. Actually, I think they're just calling me like a twink, like a hunky twink, right? That's what it is. Yeah. Have you had to change your style since you started lifting and getting more muscular? Bitch, does it look like the fuck? I was literally... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clothes don't always fit the same when you put on a lot of muscle. No, um, no, I feel like, if anything, it got worse. Like, I feel like I... Now I'm like, bitch, put every... I feel like ever since I actually started gaining more muscles, I the more I wanted to wear more dresses, because now I have the curves for it. Mm. It's muscle mm. curves, but it's a curve. <laughs> 
Um, do you, <laughs> you're that bitch and other cute lessons about being unapologetically yourself that is the book there's gonna be a link in the description below to listen to it and to buy it has there like been a moment throughout this journey where you feel like you lost yourself at all because sometimes being yourself so deeply and so openly yeah i think there's like moments for sure where i but like never like a oh my god i completely lost myself type of moment um, it's, it's truly just when I'm not home where I feel kind of like lost or where like home as in like, um, Hawaii, um, where I feel like I don't feel like I belong in some certain places. I think like, especially, um, fashion weeks, bitch, I'd be having like weird, um, imposter syndromes there, girl. I'd be, I'd be feeling so ugly. Um, especially when I went to Paris, bitch. Cause like, you know, when you're like, it's like all like white people and no offense, Zach. Um, <laughs> But I, it's it's hard to feel beautiful when everyone around you don't look like you, you know? But that makes you more beautiful though. That that too. And then you see the pictures and I'm like, oh my gosh, I look so beautiful next to all these like basic people. But you don't that, know in the moment. I thought, but, um, huh? You don't know in the moment, I guess. I guess not in the moment until like you're actually like looking back. I think now I realize like that nobody looks like me and that is my power. But I think like earlier in my career and like being in those beauty events like it it was hard not to like compare yourself to like people with better complexion and like, there's also an interesting chapter about skin bleaching and how you almost fell into that yeah i feel like i all i feel like i did fall into not skin bleaching but skin lightening like yes, i would always I ask my mom when she goes home to the philippines i would always ask her to bring home like papaya soaps which has glutathione in it and like truthfully it really just dries out your skin and like like, so you're basically, like, scratching the pigments off. Um, but it was, like, such a dry-ass fucking soap. But it's truly because when you go home, like, in the Philippines, like, white people are, like, ah. like, you see them as gods. Like, even when I first moved to America, like, I was so excited to see people with blonde hair because I wanted to feel their hair. Just thinking it felt different? <laughs> it makes sense. I legit thought y'all grew gold. Oh, I wish. <laughs> Girl, I <laughs> had this one girl in my fifth grade class, not fifth grade, third grade. Her name was Sierra Drumler, girl, and she sat right in front of me, bitch. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wanted to, I uh, I was just, like, always, like, oh, my God, you have gold streaks, bitch. Like, you just grow this. And I always, like, would pluck out a gold hair every time she sat in front of me. And, and just keep it. <laughs> and I keep it. Yeah, no, I literally was, like, oh, my God. I would hold it up in the light. I was that kid. I was, like, so amazed by white people when I first moved here, girl. And when did you realize that white people were just pieces of shit? Really, really fast. <laughs> About 48 hours in. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> Baggage claim. <laughs> Brevin Rock, I love you. You are that bitch. And other cute lessons about being unapologetically yourself. That is the here. book. Listen to it. Link in the description. Buy it. Uh, hardcover? Is it like a paperback or are we just doing a hardcover? Just give it to me hard, girl. That's it. Hard. Just the way we like it, I think, at I'm Disney. <laughs> <laughs> hard and at Disney. That's... Oh, uh, yes. Bretman Rock, you're really one of my favorite people and I thank you for being you and existing in this world because you do make it brighter and lighter and just uh, you being you is really such a joy. Thank you, Zach. I love you. You're also one of my favorite people in this world. What? You're my, like, actually, like, my top five white people, honestly. Oh, shut the fuck up. Who are honestly. The other four? Oh, nice. Yeah, who are the, yeah, other, who four? the other four? Who's the other four? Um, <laughs> I was really just making some space for, like, because I, I know there's better white people coming my way. Um, <laughs> I totally you want to keep a few seats free. <laughs> yeah. My manager's definitely top five, but I think because she has red hair, I don't think she's white. I think she's red. <laughs> so she's a cat. Yeah, I don't think gingers are white. Uh, you, you know, people in <laughs> Australia call white. them orangutans. What the fuck, oh, girl? Yeah, the, yeah. Oh my god, my friend calls them orangers. Orangers. Yeah, yeah which is short for orangutan. It's so fucked uh, up. Work. <laughs> I'm gonna call my manager an orangutan now. <laughs> she's gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> Fred and Rock, everybody, you're amazing. Thank you for yeah. being you. Thank you. Oh my god, it's been a 45 minutes already. Yeah. Past this 45 minutes of my life.